Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist. Welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my passion of the ocean with you guys through art. You click the blue thumbnail, which means that you're here for how to art. The segment where I show you how I do my art. <laughs> I post a new video every Saturday and Tuesday. The Saturday video is based on the science of the fish, or whatever subject I'm teaching them on, and Tuesday's video is how I painted that. Today we will be discovering how I painted the painted frogfish. Brush is ready, let's dive in. You know the drill. I start with the background and get my first layers done. I seem to always start with the blue of, or water. That is because I'm left-handed. The blue is typically at the top, and I like working top down and from right to left. I make sure it is nice and smooth. Then I work on my other details. I typically don't want too much detail in my background. That way the subject doesn't get lost in the picture. I do like the look of a fish being on bright white, like it's in a light tank, but I also like giving it a place to live. On this piece, I made the mistake of putting a layer of black down first. This makes it hard to lighten up. I'm not afraid of mistakes if I can learn from them. For the sediment, I used a filbert brush. I made sure I was loose with my strokes. I just placed texture to look like fine sediment and small rocks. The great thing about a filbert brush is that it creates a sharp rounded edge of paint that fades and blends into the other colors. This is great for rocks. After I finish with my first layers of sediment, I go back over my coral. You can see me using bright pink to pull the colors up. Now I'm working on my frogfish. I lay down a base coat of bright pink for this before adding my guidelines. I create guidelines where colors change. It is sort of like working with a contour map with elevation lines, but instead of elevation, I work with color changes. Notice where I'm holding my brush. I am holding it far from the bristles. It is easier to have a looser style of painting. First, it is easier on your wrist to hold it farther away from the bristles. Second, you have more precise movement without moving your whole arm. Frogfish are not smooth, so you can see me push the bristles into the canvas to create a texture. I let some nuances come through in the paint as well. I don't need to make sure the color is perfect. This is my first few layers. I work with my mid-tones, then go into my darks. I used magenta and purple mixed with white to push and pull the fish. I also try to layer thin layers of darker colors on top of the painting. I want you to be able to see the layers in the paint. It means small details can show through the top layers of paint. Since I use Liquitex Basics Acrylics paint, I use Liquitex Glazing Medium, which is the same company. They play well nice together. Liquitex is a cheap, yet high, high quality paint. It won't break the bank, but it has a light fast and it plays well. Light fast is the ability to not fade through time. I find it hard to be creative when you are fighting your materials, so I invest in nice canvas or paper and some nice medium. Your brushes can be cheap though, just make sure that the bristles are not falling out of the brush. I feel like I'm talking more about the materials this video. Back to the fish. I glaze purple over the shadows of the fish. This pushes the fish back and makes it have a depth. I am also glazing with purple instead of black, because black is just too harsh. I also want to differentiate my fish from the background. Now it is too similar. When I get to my highlights, notice I don't use bright white. This is a soft fish, and I don't want harsh contrast. When you see me add bright white, I will glaze over it with a thin layer of magenta. Make sure to let your layers dry between applications. When the paint starts to stick or not play well with the previous layers, it is time to stop for a while. Give it a few hours. These paintings take several days, not just a few hours. I noticed that my painting was getting too dark, so I glazed over the whole thing a tiny bit of white and magenta. 
this does two things. It softens the fish, and it lightens the fish. Unfortunately, it means I need to wait again. Once that layer is dry, I go over some dark shadows. Be careful here, it is easy to overdo details. Then I go over to the places with highlights. Here I use bright whites. I add details to the eyes using a liner brush on the bright white. One thing many people don't know about my paintings is that I use glass bead medium, pearlescent paint, or glitter in all of my paintings. This brings a still life photo into a living and changing painting. And I stand back for a few feet and I look at my painting and once I'm happy, I can call this painting finished. Thanks for watching this video. It means so much that you take time to watch this video to discover something new. Whether you're here just to learn how to do some art or get to know me a little bit better. I also would like to thank you for being an active member of this community. By leaving likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions, it helps this channel grow. I sell merchandise on my website and teespring.com. Links are down below. If you haven't seen last Saturday's video, click the little eye up in the corner and that'll take you to that video. Happy creating and God bless.